and welcome on July 18th, 2021 for the First Church of West Bridgewater. I'm Steve Finland. I'm going to give you my sermon today and sing a song from our hymnal called Bright, I mean Bring, O Morning Thy Music. Bring, O Morning Thy Music, number 29. And so let us begin with the sermon, Sheep Without a Shepherd. The first biblical passage is Jeremiah 23, 1-5. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all of the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer, or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. The second reading is from Mark chapter 6. Two chunks taken out of chapter 6, starting with verse 31. Jesus said to the apostles, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves, and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to the land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. May God give his blessing to my reading today. We've been examining prophets in recent weeks. Here, the great prophet Jeremiah says that Judah's leaders have not been good shepherds, but ones who have allowed the flock to be scattered. Probably a reference to the exile of Jerusalem's leaders to Babylon in Jeremiah's time, and also to the scattering of Israel's ruling classes under the Syrian attack a century earlier. But God is promising to bring the scattered Jews back to the land and to give them good shepherds for leaders, especially a Davidic descendant who will be a righteous branch and who will decide with wisdom and justice. I will come back to this important hope later in the sermon. In the Gospel story, Jesus observes the people rushing about wanting to be near him, and he has pity on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them. Teaching is what he intended to do with them, but they had heard about his reputation as a healer, and they mainly wanted healings and wonders. They were mostly concerned with the here and now, and were not so interested in his higher messages. Even so, Jesus took care of them, feeding them, healing them, giving them what good news they could understand. Jesus was known primarily as a teacher and healer, perhaps like another Elijah or Elisha, who were wonder-working prophets. Prophets often spoke out against bad leadership and false religion, and they gained many enemies among the priests, but became folk heroes among the common people. That was the case here. And Jesus did not look down upon the common people, but felt compassion for them. They really did need a leader, a good shepherd, We have a need for leaders. Sometimes we think we are self-made success stories, but really we need leaders, at least philosophically and spiritually. It was good for Jewish folks to have Jeremiah as a leader. 
who taught them that God would make a new covenant with them and would write the law on their hearts. Such spiritual hopes sustained the people for centuries while they awaited the coming of a good shepherd. How strong was their hope that it was passed down through centuries. And Jesus is certainly a good leader, also teaching about inwardly rooted spiritual goodness, as when he said, Out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. He began to teach them, but they mainly rushed about and brought their sick to him to be healed. This is understandable, but it behooves us to put the emphasis on the teaching, as where in the next chapter of Mark he teaches, There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Unquote. From within us come good things or bad things, depending upon what we are nurturing in our hearts. Related to this is the question, what are your spiritual hopes? Do you hope to see some kind of spiritual cooperation between certain groups? Do you hope to see peace within your extended family? So some of these hopes are very personal and down to earth, a little different from what I mentioned earlier, the Jewish hope for a messianic leader who would change the world. Both kinds of hope matter. So let's look at hope itself. Hope is something that may lie at the back of your mind and not be contemplated on every day. Yet it is deep and important. And when it seems there is a chance that the hope will be fulfilled, it becomes very motivating. It can make you run about the countryside looking for the healer. It can make you run and excitedly tell something to your family. As when Andrew ran to his brother Peter and said, We have found the Messiah. Remember, they had been waiting, living on hope for centuries. Hope is a great motivator, whether it lies in the back of your mind for long periods or comes to the forefront because you think it is approaching fulfillment. Hope is a little bit like love that way. It guides the direction that your life takes over the long term. It helps to define you and shape you. The Russian Andrei Sakharov hoped for civility and law and basic rights for his fellow citizens, and he fearlessly advocated for them his whole life long. He will not lose his reward. The poet Simeon longed for the consolation of Israel, remaining in the temple into his old age, and was rewarded when the Spirit told him that the baby Jesus being presented in the temple for a purification ritual, would become the Messiah. Now that's long-term hope, and it was rewarded. Perhaps Sakharov's long struggle was rewarded when the Berlin Wall came down a month before his death. That and the series of non-violent revolutions that took place in Eastern Europe, an astonishing string of events showing that sometimes hope can be fulfilled. And now, Lord, asks one psalm, for what do I wait? You are my only hope. For what was Simeon waiting? Finally, he found out. For what was Sakharov waiting? He got to see a fraction of it. Perhaps as we approach God, we are God's hope, too. God's hopes for us. I have a hope. Is it too much to hope that civilized discourse can come about in America, that conservatives and liberals can behave responsibly and learn to listen to each other? Is it too much to hope that political dialogue will be non-violent and non-hateful? Both conservatives and liberals can follow Jesus and embody his values. Both can find a good shepherd in him. He understands all kinds. It would do us good to have him as our common leader. That is my wild and crazy hope, that people currently deeply suspicious can come to understand each other, and that both sides can restrain the ones in their midst who are prone to extremism. I want to see both sides beat their spears into pruning hooks and submit themselves to instruction in the ways of peace. 
It is what comes out of us that leads either to peace or to conflicts and hatred. Let us take in the Spirit so that what we put out reflects peace and goodness. Let springs of living water come out of us. Let us shape our world in a loving way. My hope clings to my faith that we have found the Messiah and that he has come to unite the scattered children of God, as the Gospel of John says. Thanks be to God, who can unite us. And so, I come to a little hymn, number 29 in our hymnal, Bring, O Mourn, Thy Music. I'm going to sing verses 1, 3, and 4. <clears throat> Bring, O morn, thy music, bring, O night, thy silence. Ocean, chant the rapture to the storm winds coursing free. Sun and stars are singing, thou art our creator. Who art and art and evermore shalt be. Light us, lead us, love us, cry thy groping nations, pleading in the thousand tongues and calling only thee. Weaving blindly out thy holy, happy purpose, who art and art and evermore shalt be. Life nor death can part us, O thou love eternal, Shepherd of the wandering star and souls that way would be. Homeward draws our spirit to thy spirit yearning, who art and art and evermore shalt be. Draw us to you is that prayer. It's a spiritual drawing, and no one has more a spiritual attractiveness than Jesus, the most attractive personality ever to walk on this earth. And so be drawn to God. Be drawn to the qualities of God. And let us pray now, if you join me in an attitude of prayer. I pray for all the people in our congregation who need some physical healing, some recovery, for Lucy and Barbara, for Jace, for Debbie, for Winnie, for Tom. Bring healing, physical healing, and full health to all of them, Jesus. And comfort us and teach us and draw us towards spiritual unity, a kind of unity that can only be brought about in the spiritual way. Help us to see your character and your truth, Jesus, so that we may submit ourselves to you and may be able to understand people who don't think exactly the same way as we do. It is not thinking, but loving that draws us together. And so we say the prayer that you taught us, Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so go with God throughout this week and throughout your life. Be drawn to Jesus at all times, our great leader. 
Thanks be to God.